Thank you all. Um, thank you for giving us the opportunity not only to participate in this session and share with us, with you all, our um, expected results, our, our proposed actions, but also uh, for giving us the opportunity to participate in this challenging project. On behalf of my institution, Biosistema, and I will also would like to highlight that we are participating in this uh, from the evaluation part also on behalf of our colleagues in FFIS institution in Murcia, Spain. So let us start then with this session regarding uh, raising awareness on the silent uh, AMR pandemic. So, Laura. Okay. Okay, it's a pleasure to be here with all of you and see, you know, old faces and new faces. Very happy to have the opportunity to give continuity to the work of EU Jamrai One. So why is raising awareness so important uh, to, you know, fight against the EMR? Well, um, public awareness can, can drive change. Uh, it can contribute to shaping policies and also influencing healthcare practices. Informed communities are more likely to demand and also participate in infection control measures and also in prudent antibiotic use. But it's very, very, very important that uh, the experts generate and also communicate uh, very simple, uh, clear, and up-to-date information so individuals can make informed decisions and choices. Um, we are all part of the solution, uh, patients, caregivers, healthcare professionals, researchers, civil servants, policymakers, all of you. But uh, sometimes individual actions can seem like a drop of water, something insignificant, but we cannot forget that drops of water also create a ripple effect. And we have to take advantage of, of that potential and uh, promote individual actions that can um, activate uh, social change and lead us to social transformation. And also collaboration and knowledge sharing between international organizations, uh, countries, healthcare professionals, and also the general public is a must. Um, we always say that uh, AMR doesn't recognize borders, any kind of borders, that we don't have to work in silos. And it's true, right? We are here for that. Interconnectedness is crucial. And here we are all together sharing ideas, I hope also, and trying to find solutions together. But uh, we have to recognize that we are not starting from scratch. Uh, we have a solid foundation laid by stakeholders and also by the results of EU Jamrai 1. And during EU Jamrai 1, uh, we developed uh, memorable campaigns like Don't Leave It Halfway and also the One Health Butterfly Effect. We also developed an online game app to help teachers to address the EMR issue during school hours. We uh, produced and published a toolkit, a comprehensive toolkit to support partners, countries and stakeholders to develop their own communication strategies. And we were authors of several policy briefs containing recommendations and also advocating for transformative changes and best practices in Europe. And finally, we organized a contest to find a great symbol. Your turn, Laura. So it's amazing to see the quantity and quality of the results you've already obtained, you know, in the first part in the year, year right one. And now uh, coming to these states of the projects, uh, new objectives arise. So specifically in the raising awareness objective is one of the uh, driving forces behind our mission to combat the silent pandemic. And three specific objectives will guide us on this quest. First, to give visibility to our results, to our progress. By showcasing this, this uh, progress, 
we aim to instill confidence and trust in the collaborative effort to uh, address AMR. Second, to promote positive behavior change toward different audiences. We aim to encourage a shift in individual and collective uh, attitudes toward uh, uh, responsible antibiotic use. And we also um, seek to uh, um, empower individuals to make responsible decisions and to contribute to this fight to this, uh, against the, the AMR. And third, to monitor and ensure a successful impact by implementing different and robust monitoring tools and, uh, and processes to um, track the impact of our initiatives. To ensure impact involves continuous assessment, involves adapting strategies if it's needed, and also involves guaranteeing that our initiatives and of course our campaigns, our uh, awareness uh, raising campaigns, make a difference, make an impact, and translate into meaningful changes into healthcare policies and practices. And by this, this interconnected approach with the main object objective of raising awareness in its core, it forms like a dynamic process to engage stakeholders, to raise awareness, and to drive concrete actions. So let's see now which are our proposed actions. Okay, so now our challenge is to surpass and beat past achievements and honor the commitment of EU member states and stakeholders and all of you participating in this new joint action. And what will be the actions to give visibility to EU jam right? Well, uh, the first step is to develop a plan, a dynamic plan that will be our compass to uh, reach our goal. And our goal is to engage and inform relevant stakeholders from all sectors, human health, animal health, and environment. Uh, we will employ a diverse set of channels. Uh, of course, we will have our own channels. EU Jamrai One website will be reactivated and, and upgraded. And uh, we will not forget the power of social media. Uh, we will use all our profiles. Uh, actually, I take the chance to let you know that we have a brand new LinkedIn profile. Please follow us. Um, we have started today uh, with publications there. And well, through a strategic content creation and also engagement, we aim to spark meaningful conversations that convince people. And finally, we will have our events and workshops that will give us the opportunity to engage directly with, with the stakeholders. In addition to our channels, we will also have external channels. We count on you, all partners and stakeholders, to help us disseminate information through your platforms and, and all your networks. We will also collaborate with media to elevate the visibility of our efforts. And we want to participate in as many scientific conferences and events focused on AMR as possible. During EU Jamrai 1, we participated in over 60 uh, AMR events. And many of you got your posters and, <laughs> and your, I can see the faces who really fought for that. <laughs> posters and abstracts accepted in several health congresses. So uh, we hope that these platforms will bring us again opportunities for knowledge sharing, collaboration, and collective action. And the visual identity of EU Jamrai will keep going. We hope to give it a twist to reflect the innovation of the, of the new uh, joint action. Uh, we will develop a whole set of materials uh, our reports uh, will encapsulate our progress and results and, of course, ensuring transparency and accountability. Following the legacy of EU Jambrai, we will do our best to have peer-reviewed journals uh, published in scientific publications, press releases, news updates, an electronic newsletter. We will also produce videos with announcements, interviews, event summaries. 
more traditional materials like leaflets, faxics, and also the traditional layman report, final report. And we will also need some supporting tools like file sharing systems. Uh, so, uh, in summary, we will work hard to have EU Genrai at the forefront of visibility. And now going to the actions that we will develop to, uh, you know, not only raise awareness, but also help to promote behavior change. Uh, first step, as you know, as with visibility, uh, having a plan, our cornerstone throughout the project, but we cannot do this alone. We will need support. Uh, we want that our resource, results last and are sustainable, and our objective is creating EU networks uh, these networks will be very important to help us, um, you know, ensure that our actions are adapted to the needs of each country and reach our target audiences. The first network will be a EU network or group of communicators for AMR with representatives from all partners, all countries, ideally a communication expert from the National Action Plan and of course representatives of uh, EU agencies or other international uh, initiatives. It is very important to highlight that we don't want to duplicate efforts. We want to be an added value. So we will work in close collaboration with initiatives that have been going on for a long time, like the European Antibiotic Awareness uh, Day or the World Antimicrobial Awareness Week of WHO. Uh, then the second group will be a group of educators for AMR to conduct focus groups and studies to develop materials for children, also to review these materials and the translations and make the necessary adaptations and to support the dissemination among schools and teachers, all uh, with the support of EBAC. I'm not doing this right, okay, sorry. <laughs> all with the support of EBAC uh, which is already linked to schools and ministries of education. Uh, also, I wanted to mention that we are in, you know, in an area where, the, you know, we are always meeting online, but uh, we are committed to organizing presential workshops with these networks. We believe that valuable ideas and long-lasting relationships are also uh, fostering these kind of meetings. And now is the time to talk about the revision of, uh, you know, um, existing awareness raising key messages and materials, again, to avoid duplication, to identify gaps and needs, and also to conduct, if necessary, further studies. Once we have all this, the revision, our networks, and our dynamic plan that we'll have to change, you know, while we are working, we will start with the development of new strategies, with evidence-based materials and messages for each target audience. We will also promote the completion of IPC and stewardship uh, courses among uh, EU GEMRI participants and also healthcare workers in general. And we will develop our own awareness raising campaigns, digital um, awareness raising campaigns. We'll have at least one per year in all countries for the general public and another one for another audience. And all this will have to be done in close collaboration with our EU networks. We will also promote the symbol, of course, in events and also through an ambassador program. And we will uh, also implement paid social media promotions. It's also important to highlight that this joint action incorpor incorporates a very uh, significant educational component designed to engage younger audiences uh, through the collaboration with education professionals, students, and parents. We have already mentioned the creation of this network of educators, and now let's see the more concrete actions for this target audience. We will uh, conduct a study to identify barriers and facilitators to the implementation of AMR awareness activities in schools organize focus groups to test the impact of existing materials, and also to identify more effective ways to reach this target audience. The results of this study will be used not only to develop uh, new materials, but also to promote the existing ones and update them if necessary. 
as always, of course, with the support of the networks, the existing initiatives, and uh, EBAC. So uh, now let's see the more concrete actions for each um, group uh, of a student. It's a student group. For primary schools, we are planning to explore the dissemination of micro combat with uh, paid social media promotions and also introduce an AMR debate kit that teachers can use during classes. For the secondary schools, we will also disseminate micro combat, uh, but we will go a little bit beyond with this target group having an EU competitions offering a prize. Then we will develop an online escape room with a real demo version that you will be able to test in one of the joint actions uh, meetings. It will be fun. <laughs> and then for university level, uh, we will develop a EUE library with AMR contents and lessons organized by modules and disseminated among EU universities. This will be a great material to uh, promote uh, segmented behavior change strategies targeting specific audiences. So that's it for me. Okay, and all of these actions and, of course, all the actions of the uh, whole project uh, will help us to ensure that we uh, achieve our plan impact, our objectives, and, of course, they are properly disseminated and communicated. And the evaluation will play like a key role on that mission. Through a dynamic, interactive, and a strong communication process with all partners, we will collect all the key information that is needed to ensure that we are achieving our milestones. And in the basis of this process, it's of key importance to define a set of indicators which are to be, need to be aligned uh, you know, with the, uh, the, uh, the inaction objectives. And we have with good news here because you all have already worked on a preliminary set of process, output, outcome, and impact indicators. And these indicators will be like uh, our light in the light, you know, in the way to, to the success of our proposal somehow. And the performance of these indicators of these activities uh, will be monitored. The quality will be assessed by using different um, uh, monitoring processes and uh, activities. And uh, we will collect, it is important here to collect all this information, all the key information from the very beginning in a baseline process and in, uh, of course, in an ongoing basis. So we will have to provide feedback in real time, like in a continuous improvement cycle somehow to assure that we are collecting the main information that it is necessary and that we can uh, somehow develop strategies to enhance uh, the joint actions, activities, and objectives. All in all, so these steps are key to measure our expected results, our impact, the implementation of our results in the member states and associated countries, and in the end, to ensure that the main objective of the joint action itself is achieved, which is, of course, to change the course of the pandemic. And uh, before we go to the, to the results and impact, we would like to highlight that um, all of the areas of the joint action, not only uh, the, the areas regarding raising awareness, but also all of them will be monitored by the same methodology. So we are all committed, committed to work on the, uh, uh, to ensure the impact of our project. So let's see uh, some of these indicators that I've been mentioning that we have been working on uh, before, you know, or during the, the preparation of the proposals. Uh, specifically in the communication and raising awareness um, uh, topic, uh, we've got uh, a list of um, output, outcome, and impact indicators. Uh, in the first group, we've got, for instance, estimated audience reached or the degree of satisfaction with the, all the workshops that you've been already mentioning that we are going to perform, the number of ambassadors that have been engaged, or the social media campaigns developed that uh, Laura already mentioned. 
As for the outcome indicators, uh, the level of perception of uh, our results, the number of downloads of the debate educational kit, the number of ambassadors wearing the symbol, or the number of member states participating in the awareness campaigns. And last but not least, uh, some uh, impact indicators, as for instance, the number of member state uh, dissemination activities, uh, sim the simple visibility on social media, of course, and the degree of schools' uh, satisfaction with the campaigns and the, and the activities that are going, going to be performed. And to finish uh, our presentation, let us share a couple of um, you know, take-home messages. So, today we celebrate Europe's renewed commitment to raise awareness on the silent pandemic. And then together we will keep AMR reduction high on the agenda for a healthier future. Thank you. Thank you. Lara Nerea, thank you very, very much. It speaks very much to me. As the mother of two teenagers, I can completely see how these actions will make, seriously, yeah, a big difference in schools. So, thank you very much. And you're going to have a double whammy of Q&A, because you get your own Q&A, just for you, and then we're going to fill all those chairs okay. With, okay. <laughs> with the rest of the And this is the last presentation. It's a challenge. <laughs> so but very visual, I, I mean, it very spoke, as I said, spoke very much to me. So do we have any, any questions yes. here in the room? I know we have a couple of online questions from Sinead. I was just wondering if you have any raised, yes. Yeah. We'll take yours and then we'll go to you, Sinead. Okay, um, Thomas Janssens, I'm a, a country liaison for Belgium. Um, and my question is about uh, the awareness raising ac activities for children. I was just wondering which kind of behaviors do you want to target in these children? Like, are we supposed to make them more focal in changing their beliefs about prescriptions? Like, where are you going with this and how are you going to make sure that the actions that you're proposing are going to be effective? Thank you. Thank you. Well, we still have to plan. Uh, we don't have, you know, uh, an answer yet because we have to design a plan and actually identify the needs first. So that's why we are conducting focus groups also, to see where are the gaps and to see what we really need. Um, the idea is to be as evidence-based as possible. Uh, you know, we, we don't want to play to develop fan campaigns and that's all. No, we want to start identifying the need, what is not working, testing things that have already been done and then develop the ones that we need or correcting or adapting the ones that exist that could be improved. So um, we have four years for that. First year will be you know, more dedicated to plan, to discuss, to meet uh, with people who have been already doing this for a long time. Uh, and, and, you know, and we are sure that we will have a lot of insights from there. Uh, the networks, I think that will help us a lot because we will be directly working with teachers, educators and communicators that are um, daily working there. The challenge is going to be to have all this adaptable and done for all the countries. Addressing the needs of all the countries is like an impossible mission, but uh, we will try to have uh, you know, campaigns that are as adaptable as possible and Common flexible as possible. Finding common denominators. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Nira, did you want to add something? No, all good. Maybe we'll just take one of Sinead's questions and then we'll come to you, Verena. Yep. Yes. So we have two questions from Arnaud Selve in Belgium. Uh, would it be possible to have access to the game app on Android and Apple because it seems like it doesn't exist anymore? Yeah, because we have uh, probably we will. That's one of the things we have to do. Technology changes so fast, and since we ended EU Jam Rai 1 until today, a lot of things have happened. So we are going to do that, and they will be able to download an updated version soon. Okay, thank you. Two more questions. This is also from Arnaud. Uh, in order to reach a young audience, will you consider reaching out to influencers to share awareness on AMR? Very yes. good question. Of course, that's yes. one of the plans. <laughs> Uh, we have to be very careful with that, though. Yeah. Uh, we have to select very well the influencers. Make sure that we are selecting people 
who know about the topic, people who have some scientific knowledge and basis. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's a challenge that we want to address because it's the way to reach younger audiences. I think that, you know, I include myself in the generation that sometimes finds difficulty to, you know, understand the, the, the social media and the, the great impact. But the truth is that it's, it's the platform to reach them. So we, hopefully we will be able to create meaningful contents for them. And, and our challenge is to compete with the other contents that are in social media and make our context sexy and attractive for them. And so, condense it. Exactly. <laughs> very short. It has to be very short. What a challenge. <laughs> That's going to be fun. Okay. <laughs> and we had a third one. Just a third one from Angela Lenner, I think in Austria. She asks, at what age is the start of secondary school defined? I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't get that. At what age is the start of secondary school? Is it 12? Well, I think 11? that it depends on the country. Oh, yeah. So our, our educators network will help us, but well, we will have some age frames and we will develop campaigns. The, the, you know, the, the success will come to if, if we make, you know, um, very targeted campaigns for different audiences. Thank you. Felina. Thank you. Very exciting work ahead of you. Good luck. Um, my question is a bit thought-provoking. You, in the last Jamrai, you um, made this wonderful symbol, which I think is excellent. And we've already, thanks to Christine here, we already tried to also promote it in this in our Tatfar group, and it was a great success. I would I would like to say, so I think it's very clear to understand the message. But what about the term antimicrobial resistance itself? Yeah. It if was a discussion. It yes. Sorry. Are you thinking about somehow, I mean, I, I'm not saying that we're ever going to like uh, replace it with anything, but for the purposes of communication, mm. it is still very scientific. And um, I guess you have, or s some of us have come across mm. this situation where people think their body is resistant. They don't understand. They think, well, I haven't taken antibiotics in five years. I'm not, I'm not bothered by this problem. You see, so um, are you... Maybe this is a yes, provocation yes. to you that Actually, you think about. Actually, it, it was yeah. a discussion. It, it is not antimicrobial resistant. We decided to call it the antibiotic resistant to, you know, at least make it a little bit. I know that it doesn't help. We thought about uh, calling it a badge. There's also a great initiative in the UK that it's, you know, the, um, what's they call that? Uh, you, ha you put your own badge because you... You, you, you are now a guardian, an antibiotic guardian. That kind of things can work a little bit better. And yes, thank you for the suggestion. We can, we can consider that to make it more closer to the kids and understandable at first sight. I would say enroll a couple of rappers to find uh, something that sticks with, those, with the kids. Javier. Thank you very much. Exciting. I feel really energized and looking forward to not only to seeing what you're going to do, but to working with you. Uh, one comment on the, at the quadripartite level, we have also engaged with uh, the youth and uh, we have a working group uh, representing the youth. So uh, we offer this link in terms of avoiding duplication and leveraging the uh, uh, mutual learnings. And then fully agree with uh, the comment of um, finding something better than antimicrobial resistance because in the last uh, Davos conference where the finance people are gathering, they were saying this is terrible. This is not terrific. This is terrible. Uh, we do not understand and we, uh, we cannot mobilize resources. So mm -hmm. my question, I have seen the different audiences that you have that you are targeting. And one question that I have is, uh, are you going to target also ministers of finances? I wouldn't like to, <laughs> <laughs> but let's see. I, I take the note. <laughs> I, I think I leave that for War Package 5 colleagues with the National Action yeah, Plans. Yeah. You can, yeah. we'll, we'll keep it for later. We have a question at the back. We have, hi. We, Hello. Hello, uh, good evening everyone. First of all, if I may present myself. I'm, uh, my name is Alexandra David. I'm a six-year pharmacy student, and I'm representing the European Pharmaceutical Student Association. 
first of all, thank you for all the presentation during the day and thank you so much for this presentation. I have um, two questions. The first one is regarding the uh, proposed actions for the primary school. I really love the ideas that you proposed, but I, if I may uh, raise a little concern, I'm, I'm afraid that maybe a digitalized option might create more inequalities in terms of access to knowledge and access to health. And I was wondering if maybe there could be like a, a reflection about maybe implementing a policy in national education and make it a like, like for example, today we know that in primary school, in everywhere in the world, approximately, uh, everyone learns about the table of multiplication. Maybe there, it sh there mm. should be actions within, like implemented in each country to actually implement it in the national education system. And my other question is regarding secondary school and university and the approaches for university. I was wondering if you were planning to collaborate with student association in the promoting and in, uh, in actually in, in uh, putting in place the actions, especially for university, maybe it can, it can help raise awareness more easily. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'll start with the last one, of course. Uh, we need you. You are part of the stakeholder forum and um, we have to talk and, and plan this together. And probably you can also be part of the network uh, of, of educators, for sure. Regarding the first one, actually micro combat is based on a card game, a physical card game. So it works the same on the online version and the card game. And it can be also distributed. Also, the same thing with the debate kit. kit. You can have it online or you can have it printable for teachers, mm -hmm. but we also have the version that it's you know, uh, distributed through schools. It depends a lot on the structure of the ministries of education, and I think that our colleagues from EVAC can give us a great support with that. Because, you know, some countries have a, you know, a structure that allows them to make the distribution throughout the different schools, and for some it's a challenge and they prefer, you know, online resources. So we will have to decide on how to do it. Regarding the, the, you know, of course, we always have in mind that we cannot have everything digital. Actually, this symbol born with that idea in mind, that we want something tangible that could be crafted everywhere. If you have the resources to make professional printouts, great. If not, you just need red, you know, paper and white paper and a pin, and you can, you know, make an activity with the kids in the school. But re yeah, regarding getting AMR integrated into national curricula, I think that would be yet another yeah. hurdle to overcome, for sure. We have, yes, thank you, another question. Hello, my name is Karuna Vendrik from the Public, Public Health Institute from the Netherlands. And I was wondering, how are you planning to increase awareness among general practitioners? Okay. Thank you, very straightforward. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, um, not only um, there will be many, many activities, also behavior change activities developed by our colleagues from other work mm -hmm. packages mm -hmm. that will be intervention, more technical interventions regarding stewardship, surveillance, etc. So it's something that we have to plan together. As communication team, we will give them support to reach that target audience, but we will have to design everything together. And I will add that we will, uh, you know, need to work together on giving the results on showing the impact of these uh, activities, you know, in different audiences and comparing, you know, this impact between all of them also. Thank you. Yes, Christine. Um, thank you. This is super exciting, and I'm, I know from the last joint action uh, your ability to implement, so this is going to be wonderful. I'm sure, um, but we have to also remember that bacteria are our friends. Uh, life on Earth would not exist without bacteria, um, and so I think we need to make sure that we um, neutralize, so always neutralize the messages, because I know we have an uh, influencer in Norway that works on AMR, um, and it's great, she does a great job, but uh, tends to be use scare tactics. Um, and so, unless we're talking about drug-resistant gonorrhea, no scare tactics, please. 
Yes, Very actually, I, I must confess, I don't like to see pandemic in the materials, but that's my personal. But after COVID, it got easy to speak about the new pandemic, the silent pandemic, right? Uh, all evidence, you know, says that if you want to change behavior, you have to promote it positively. You have to show them that if they change, they will, you know, they will get a result. It's, it's worth it. Uh, it's not scaring that we are going to get there. Um, and yes, I think that w that's a big challenge. We have to find that way of showing, you know, younger generations that it's worth it to change their behavior. And it's very difficult. And we saw that with COVID. Yeah, especially without using the shortcuts that you often Pe see yeah. in social media. Yeah, mm. people are tired of mm. hearing about pandemics. The end of the world. The end of the world. Yeah. 2050, it's going to end. So let's try and find a way of inspire to action. Thank you very much. Do we have any more? Yes. Do we have a? Thank you. And I think this will be probably our last question. Uh, We're running out of Sam time. Sam Sulikow, it's uh, Council for European Dentist again. Just a question. Um, monitoring is not the same as evaluation. Could you tell us a little more, because, and that actually go for all projects which have been we talked about today, uh, but especially yours. And could you tell us a little bit more evaluation plan because it's uh, critical. Thank you. Yeah, you mean that, uh, I mean, monitoring is part of the evaluation, of course. So, yeah, of course, so, uh, we will, uh, okay, uh, apply the different monitoring processes of all the activities and the strategies and the initiatives that ha have been uh, developed. But these are, of course, they will not be the only activity uh, undertaken in, uh, you know, in the evaluation part, you know. Of course, we will uh, uh, assess the quality of the activities also. And also a very key uh, issue regarding the evaluation is how we are going to approach, uh, how we are going to um, uh, know uh, which is the impact of the activities that are going to be performed. And um, we are now working, of course, in January 1, uh, this, this will, uh, will so was uh, assessed somehow. But I know that in this part, in the second part of Jan Rai, uh, this is going to be key. So uh, we are work, working on a, uh, on, on a framework to, uh, uh, to uh, define how we are going to measure this impact through all these, uh, you know, the activities and the indicators that uh, have been defined. And we'll, uh, we will continue working on these indicators. So of course, just monitoring is just a, a part of the whole evaluation approach that we are going to undertake in the project.